Hello, everyone. My name is Ianod Burrell. I am the Community Affairs Rep for East Bay Mud, and welcome to our virtual community meeting for the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant. We have a lot of information to share this evening, and I'd like to start with introductions. Jay Park will be our will be doing the presenting this evening. So let's start. Let's start there. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Jay Park, and I'm the project manager for the El Sobrante, or rather the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant Reliability Improvements Project. Um, for those of you who have attended previous public meetings, uh, those meetings were led by Stella Tan, and I am the uh, new project manager replacing Stella. Uh, with me here today are David Renstrom, Manager of Water Distribution Planning Division, Sandra Mulhauser, Senior Engineer for Major Facilities Section, and also with us are our consultants from Panorama Environmental, Suzanne Heim, and Emily Capello. So today, let me first share, start by sharing the screen. And then, Jay, if we could go over the Q&A, how that will be handled. That will be we'll do. Thank you. All right. Can you all see my screen or the presentation slide? Let's see. How about there? Yes, thank you. Excellent. So today we're here to present an update on the project, specifically the new analysis that was done for the draft EIR. That'll be the first part of today's meeting, followed by the second part, which will be um, dedicated to hearing and collecting the public's comments and questions. Uh, per the SQL process, response to comments will be provided in the future when we complete the final draft, the final EIR, and that'll be published sometime next year, hopefully by the summer. So the only responses or answers that I'll be providing today will be questions of clarification on the material that's presented here today. So, um, Inad, is there anything else that we need to cover before I start the presentation? That is it. Thank you. All right. Then here we go. So, sorry, this, Jay. Yes, Director Young is here. And ah, he excellent. To be promoted a panelist, and I think um, provide some words. Okay, so yes, Director thanks. Young is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Please, please take the floor. Hi. Um. Welcome, everyone. Um. I don't know how many. It's, I can't see how many people we have. Um. In in the meeting. Um. Not too many, but um. Hopefully, more will join. My name's Marguerite Young. I'm the director for Ward Three, which includes the Sobrani Water Treatment Plan and surrounding community, um, as well as um, all of the watershed that feeds San Pablo Reservoir and the towns of Orinda Moraga, um, North Oakland, and the city of Piedmont. So um, this project, uh, as Jay is going to go into quite a lot of depth to explain, um, is very important to um, uh, safeguarding our future water supply and making sure that we are able to uh, meet the challenges of climate change that will come our way and um, continue providing um, clean, safe, high quality water to all of our customers. So um, I'm assuming that most of you in the audience are uh, live by or near um, uh, the treatment plant. So you're going to definitely be impacted by the construction and we recognize and very much appreciate uh, your patience and um, uh, you know uh, and all of the feedback that we've gotten, which has made I think this project much stronger and much better, much more aligned with the interests of the community. We hope you'll agree with that, but if you don't, we can count on you to speak up. Um, and you know, since this project really is going to not even going to be built for another 10 years um, in all likelihood. Um, there's still plenty of time to, um, you know, tweak and, and et cetera, and, and get comfortable with the idea that this big project's going to be uh, coming into town. And if phase two happens, which 
um, Jay will cover, it's even further down the road, probably, you know, 20 or 30 years even, uh, you know, in the future. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to, to Jay and the, the crew that's been working so hard on this to um, walk through the project. Well, thank you, Director Young. All right, so let's get started here. So today I'll provide a description of the project, explain why we need the project. We'll go over the public outreach and community feedback that was received from past meetings. And then the new portion of uh, the new information that's gonna be presented today is the findings, the analysis uh, from the draft environmental impact report. And then we'll briefly talk about next steps and then move on to the questions and uh, comments from the public. So Sobrante Water Treatment Plant is located in El Sobrante. Uh, it serves the northernmost region of our service area, all the way up north in Crockett, down through Rodeo, Hercules, Pinole, El Sobrante, San Pablo, Richmond, and as far south as El Cerrito and Kensington. Uh, Sobrante Water Treatment Plant is a critical facility. It's operated in the summer, during droughts, and during outages of other facilities. San Pablo Water Treatment Plant gets its water from the San Pablo Reservoir, which is filled by local runoff and water from the Sacramento River during drought operations. Here is an image of Sobrante back when it was constructed in the 1960s. And you can see there's a lot of open space around the water treatment plant versus today, this image is from 2020, where you can see all the development that has surrounded the treatment plant property. So a lot has changed since the treatment plant was constructed. The water treatment plant and East Bay Mud in general faces a lot of challenges and trying to supply reliable, clean water for our customers. There have been frequent droughts, wildfires, and these all impact the water treatment plant in terms of where we get our water, the need to tap into our supplemental supply from the Sacramento River. And it also impacts the quality of the water that you get at your tap, including the generation of disinfection byproducts. So these are some of the challenges that we face and the improvements that we need to uh, overcome these challenges. So the objective of the treatment plant project is to replace aging infrastructure, restore reliable treatment capacity to full capacity, which is 60 million gallons per day, to reduce disinfection byproducts, improve efficiency and of maintenance operations, to maintain flexibility to treat water from supplemental supplies, and finally, to increase treatment capacity as needed to meet future demands. Now this figure shows the area where the project will take place. The orange areas are city of Richmond, green is, set it, is city of San Pablo, and the gray areas are the unincorporated communities of Contra Costa County. Now this project is divided into two phases. Phase one, uh, hold on just a minute. I'm having some technical difficulties here. There we go. Sorry. Uh, at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see San Pablo Reservoir. And if you follow San Pablo Dam Road north and turn on Valley View, you'll get to the treatment plant. And like I mentioned, this project is divided into two phases. Phase one Will, is to restore capacity to 60 million gallons per day. And that construction and activity will occur within the property of uh, the Sobrante water treatment plant. Now, phase two is what's needed to increase capacity to 80 million gallons per day. And that'll take place at the treatment plant and also in the roads of the local communities. And this new pipeline that's going to be constructed within the roads is called the Central North Aqueduct Pipeline, which is part of phase two. And from here on out, I'll just refer to that as the phase two pipeline. Now, phase one is to restore capacity, and that's scheduled to begin in approximately 2030. Now, phase two, which will take capacity up to 80 MGD, or 80 million gallons per day, is dependent upon 
uh, the demands, the need, the customer water demands. And currently, the projections for water demand suggest that phase two will be needed in approximately the year 2050. Now, these are projections, uh, much like weather forecasts, there is a high level of uncertainty. And so we revise our projections roughly every 10 years. And so as the years go on, we'll reevaluate the need and timing for this project. So it is conceivable if water demands are never realized and they don't increase, that phase two will not be needed. Now here is an up close shot of the Sobrante water treatment plant area. You have a valley view on the left with a main road at the top. Now for phase one includes demolition of existing treatment facilities. These are the age facilities that uh, need to be replaced and those are shown in the red hash marks. The new facilities are shown in orange and they include uh, the reclaimed solids handling facilities which are needed to replace those that are demolished the chlorine contact basin, which will help reduce disinfection byproducts, fifth stage flocculation, which will help restore capacity to 60 million gallons per day, and the consolidated maintenance building, which will collect these scattered maintenance uh, areas and put them all under one roof. Now, phase two is shown in blue. And this is essentially improvements to every major process in the treatment plant. And then it also includes a new pipeline, which is needed to convey that increase in capacity from the treatment plant to the distribution system. Now, that phase two pipeline starts at the treatment plant, goes down Dia Villa Way, goes west on San Pablo Drive, through El Portal Drive, Rollingwood Drive, and through Road 20 and terminates just west of San Pablo Avenue. This is approximately four miles of new pipeline, and most of it will be constructed with open cut or open trench methods. The exception is a very short section over here where the pipeline crosses San Pablo Creek and that will be constructed by trenchless methods to avoid uh, disruptions to the San Pablo Creek. Now, we've performed numerous uh, meetings to reach out to the public. This includes, uh, which began several years ago, back in 2021. And this includes meetings with uh, public agencies, the staff of Contra Costa County, City of Richmond, City of San Pablo, we met with the fire department, and then we held several meetings with the general public, and today's meeting will be the fourth. We also met with the county supervisor, Joya, uh, presented to the Richmond City Council, and twice to the El Sobrante Municipal Advisory Council. Uh, we last met yesterday, or last night. Now, here is a visual simulation of what the improvements will look like or what the treatment plant will look like after all the improvements. Um, and in response to public comment, we made some significant changes. The first was, you see these three basins here, the public requested that these be pushed back from a main road. So we doubled the setback from 50 feet up to just over 100 feet from a main road. In addition, we increased the number of trees and shrubs to provide additional visual screening. And then this fence along the Amen Road initially was an eight foot tall security fence, which is uh, the standard for East Bay Mud. Uh, we decreased that down to four feet and changed it to a wrought iron style fence to match the stylings of the fence that was used at the local fire station. Also, these two buildings were originally designed to match the existing architecture. However, in response to public comment, we revised them to the mission revival style, which also matches the Richmond Fire Station. Uh, last but not least, our maintenance building, uh, per public request, we pushed back all the way to the back of the plant 
uh, creating further distance and view from a main road. Now, that should all be familiar if you had attended past meetings. Um, so nothing new there. Now, we're going to move on to the analysis of the draft environmental impact report. And this will be all new information. So based on an initial study of the uh, project and its impacts, we determined that there are 14 environmental factors or resources that could potentially be impacted by the construction and operation of the uh, project. Uh, after the analysis, we determined that with standard district East Bay mud standard practices, procedures, and specifications uh, for half or seven of these environmental factors, the impacts of the project would be less than significant. Uh, thereafter, we added project-specific mitigations and with those mitigations, most of the remaining uh, environmental factors, the impacts from the projects were reduced to less than significant levels. The only exception is this one, which is noise. And even with the project-specific mitigations, we found that at times for specific activities, the noise levels would be significant and unavoidable. So now I'm going to go over all the mitigations, me mitigation measures that we uh, applied for the project. So the first one is for aesthetic resources. We have a mitigation measure for landscape maintenance. So at the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant Phase 1, we will, prior to uh, installing or planting the project trees, we'll inspect them all to make sure that they're healthy. After one year of planning, we will again inspect and replace any project trees that have failed to grow. And we will also, for a period of five years after planting, uh, irrigate to, uh, to help the new plants and shrubs grow. Biological resources. So if you look at the figure here, there are these blue areas along a main road and down below. These are wetland, seasonal wetland habitats. Uh, in addition, there's also a little bit of willow riparian habitat. And for the project that occurs on the treatment plant for phases one and two, we will, where feasible or as feasible, avoid these wetland habitat areas. Uh, if unavoidable, then what we'll do is do a pre-construction survey and then restore the impacted areas to pre-project conditions and then do a sequence of monitoring, annual monitoring for up to five years or until uh, success criteria are met. Now, if there are any permanent impacts and that can't be restored, for example, if we pave over any of these areas, uh, these permanent impacts to these habitats will be compensated through either enhancement or creation of habitat on-site or off-site. If on-site mitigation is not feasible, then we will purchase mitigation credit from uh, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and Regional Water Quality Board approved mitigation bank. Uh, in addition, for phase two pipeline where it crosses the San Pablo Creek, um, there is the potential to encounter California red-legged frogs and the Western pond turtle. So what we will do is construct uh, conduct a pre-construction survey and install temporary exclusion fences to keep the critters out. If a frog or potential burrow or turtle are found, then we will allow the frog or turtle to leave the work area on its own or adjust the work limits to avoid the frog or turtle. If unavoidable, then the district will obtain any required permit or approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to relocate these individual creatures. Cultural and tribal resources. We have a mitigation measure for archeological and tribal monitoring, and this applies to phase two of the pipeline. There is a previously recorded archeological site, and there are potentially areas with moderate sensitivity for buried resources or artifacts. And so we will have a archeological and tribal monitor present for two days per week to inspect uh, the sediment. Uh, this may be reduced to periodic monitoring, or we may cease inspections entirely if uh, if there are none. And 
If we happen to run into sediments that are likely to contain archaeological resources, then we will develop a monitoring plan. Geology and soils. So this mitigation measure is for a paleontological resource monitoring plan, and this applies to uh, phase one and two at the water treatment plant and the phase two pipeline. Um, any project excavations that occur in the Arinda formation, which is a geologic formation that is known to have a higher potential to uh, contain fossils, uh, we will retain a professional paleontologist and they will prepare a resource monitoring pl plan in case we uh, run into any fossils. So before I go into the mitigation measures for transportation and noise, uh, the typical project hours for construction will be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that coincides with uh, the city of Richmond and is actually uh, within the, uh, the allowance from the city of San Pablo. However, Contra Costa County restricts or limits excavation and grading activities from 7.30 to 5.30 p.m. So with that in mind, we have mitigations for restricting heavy truck traffic at the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant. So when we are off-hauling soil or demolition material, we will limit off-hauling to the hours of 9 to 4 p.m. And where these, this hauling occurs in front of trees, or sorry, in front of schools, rather, on Valley View Road and Camino Pablo, we'll further limit the hours of hauling to 3 p.m. Uh, note that concrete pours may begin uh, before 7, as early as 6 a.m., um, and I'll get into that further in another slide. Uh, but please be aware that if there's any pavement damage from uh, the project, uh, that pavement will be repaired. For phase two pipeline, we have similar mitigation where there is a school located on road 20, and we will limit hauling hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And again, we will repair any damaged pavement that is caused by the project. Transportation uh, mitigation measure to coordinate with AC Transit. So if for the phase two pipeline, uh, there are any temporary closures of bus stops or rerouting of bus lines that's required, we will coordinate with AC Transit a uh, minimum of 60 days in advance of that construction activity. Bicycle safety. Again, for phase two pipeline, uh, we will have to do open cut construction within the, within the roadways. And as feasible, we will avoid striped or designated bikeways. Uh, if that is not feasible, uh, we will post notices along the roadways 14 days prior to construction, providing uh, location and dates of construction and alternative routes for the cyclists. Pedestrian access. Again, for phase two pipeline, we will, where feasible, um, maintain our, a minimum of one crosswalk uh, open and accessible at any given time to each of the affected signalized intersections on Valley View Road, San Pablo Dam Road, El Portal Drive, and Road 20. We will also prepare a pedestrian access plan before construction. And the final environmental factor area is noise. And our primary mitigation measure is the installation of temporary sound barriers. And this will occur at the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant and also at the San Pablo Creek for phase two pipeline. So in this figure for phase one, you'll see the location of the temporary sound barrier shown in orange. And the first one will be placed along Amend Road. And the second will be placed along uh, where the demolition is occurring, just west of Valley View Road. In phase two, the, the sound barriers are shown in purple, and that'll be located or placed along the uh, gravity thickeners and also near San Pablo Creek, where the trenchless pipeline installation will occur. The second mitigation measure for noise is limiting hours and offsite lodging. So for phase two construction of the pipeline, where the construction occurs in Contra Costa County, we will limit hours for excavation and grading activities from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m where feasible. 
and where nighttime construction is needed at tie-ins and intersections, we will offer off-site lodging. So this nighttime construction may be required by the encroachment permit or when uh, limiting construction to daytime is infeasible. And so if nighttime construction is needed, then we will offer off-site so off lodging for residences that are impacted within 660 feet of the construction activity. So even with these mitigation measures, there are instances where the noise limit, the noise will exceed noise limits. And that'll occur at the Sobrante water treatment plant at both phase one and phase two. In phase one, there'll be some pile driving of I-beams that are needed for those basins that are closest to Amen Road. And that activity will occur for about 20 days. Also, concrete pouring uh, will occur prior to 7 a.m. as early as 6 a.m. And that'll occur for approximately 36 days in phase one and 33 days in phase two. And the reason why we start concrete pouring so early is so that we can complete the concrete pours in a single day. If there are disruptions to concrete pours, that impacts the quality of the concrete pour and reduces the service life of the facility. For phase two pipeline, when we're constructing the trenchless uh, pipeline at San Pablo Creek, uh, that work is anticipated to exceed no noise limits uh, for approximately 42 days. And also when the pipeline is constructed in the roadways, that is also anticipated to exceed noise limits. And that should be for about five days at each location. And if nighttime construction is required at intersections or tie-ins, we anticipate that the noise level will be exceeded uh, from roughly five to, to 10 days at each location. So those are all the mitigation measures that are planned for the project. Um, the next steps are that uh, the public review period for the draft EIR will end on October 28th. So the public will need to submit their comments either by email or through snail mail to the address that's posted uh, on the project website. And I'll also have a slide there showing the address. Uh, thereafter, we will compile all the comments that we receive and provide answers in the final EIR that will go to the board of directors for certification. Uh, hopefully in July of 2025. Then design of phase one of the project will start in 2027, followed by construction in 2030. And then, as I mentioned, there's some uncertainty with uh, phase two. And so those start dates for design and construction will be determined in the future as we get uh, closer to the time and as we revise our demand projections for customer uh, water use. So again, for more information, please go to the project website where you found the, the link to the Zoom meeting. Uh, here's the email for sending additional comments. And again, here's an address for sending uh, comments by mail. And this information is also on the website. So with that, we'll end this presentation and move on to the public comments. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Jay, are you able to see the questions in the Q&A portal? Um, yes. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, also, my colleagues have compiled some of the questions here for me. So let's see. Uh, first comment from, I believe it is Stefan. Oh, sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, it starts with a G. Uh, Giglieri uh, says, I live on the ridge line on Heavenly Ridge Lane and have line of sight and sound to the field where you plan this project to be executed. We are very concerned uh, that we'll be hearing noise both during construction, but also when the plant is operational and also that our sight lines will be significantly negatively impacted. Please address how you will mitigate this for people who are not at ground level, but have homes above the site. Well, thank you for your comment. Um, we can say that 
The impacts from noise were analyzed and it's discussed in the noise section of the draft EIR. Um, and earlier I presented those mitigations uh, for noise. Um, there are no long-term noise impacts associated with the operation of the water treatment plant. Uh, thank you for your comment. Next comment. This is again from Stephen. It says, I would also like you to know that this is the first we have been formally advised of this project. I see that there have been other community events related to this, but we have not received any communications regarding that, which frankly is not acceptable. Uh, I would hope that someone from East Bay Mud would visit our home to observe and address the impacts on homes on the ridge line. Uh, I can be reached and he provided their email address and phone number. Well, hmm. thank you for your comment. Um, I can say that we've completed, in my opinion, significant outreach for the project. Uh, as I've shown, you know, we've presented uh, all those uh, dates for the public meetings. Um, the neighbors on Heavenly Ridge were notified uh, via postcards. And those were postcards for this meeting and for previous meetings. Um, the purpose of this draft EIR is to analyze the impacts of the project uh, on the environment and the community and help develop what are feasible mitigation measures. Uh, past presentations that we've done and uh, information and additional information is also available on the project website. Um, you are free to review the draft EIR and provide any additional comments you may have. Um, and we will be happy to address those in the uh, final EIR. All right. Um, next one. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, also from Stephen. It says, as mentioned, not invited to past meetings. So this is all new. Why would you not put the buildings closer to amend and the mechanical aspects that are currently 100 feet off amend to further back buried in your property? to reduce sight and noise issues. Well, um, we are limited by the, the physical space that's available on the properties. Um, we have met with the public or in our previous meetings. We initially had the basins and structures much closer uh, to accommodate uh, the needs of the operations. Um, we have made some significant changes by trying to move those basins as far as we can or as far as uh, it's feasible from the road. And that's what we've presented today and what we've presented also in past meetings. Um, also, the basins are mostly buried. Um, they're actually quite deep. Uh, the nearest ones to Men Road are approximately 40 feet in height, and most of that is below grade. Approximately four to five feet will be above grade. So um, we have made significant changes to the project design based on uh, public comment. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, it says, the next comment is from, I believe, Matt. Uh, Matt B. from the City of San Pablo. It says, the City of San Pablo is in the design phase of the replacement of the San Pablo Avenue bridge at Road 20 and San Pablo Avenue. Although your pipeline schedule uh, at this location may need to be reprioritized, although your pipeline schedule at this location may need to be reprioritized, please include uh, the senior civil engineer, Matt B. And there's an email address for uh, further communication. Uh, thank you for your comment. And we will certainly uh, uh, stay in communication with uh, your agency along with other agencies that are potentially impacted by the project. Um, 
And we will, of course, throughout the process, design and construction, continue to coordinate with uh, all local agencies that are potentially impacted. All right, thank you for that comment. Uh, are there any additional comments? Let's see. I don't see any more. I think that was the last one. Um, perhaps, is there anybody who, instead of a written comment, would like to uh, verbalize or speak on their comment? Uh, if you do, please raise your hand and we'll... Uh, we will uh, unmute you. Uh, Ianad, do you see anybody with a raised hand? I am looking here and let me triple check. I do not. And if I'm missing your hand, if you can please put it in the Q&A saying, hey, my hand is raised, but I don't... Uh I do see one more new comment here. Let's see. This is from Ed and Suzanne Taylor. It says, regarding the basins, the current basins shoot water into the air, appearing to be several feet high. It can currently be seen from our house in a men road. And we are wondering how it will work in the future. Um, there are no plans to increase what is existing there are no yeah there are no the new facilities that are planned uh won't have any aeration systems so there should be no change to that all right thank you for that comment uh, is there anybody else or any additional comments I'm not seeing any, but we'll just kind of wait a minute or two just in case folks would like to pull their thoughts together. Yeah, And for those who attended, I'd like to thank you for attending and your thoughtful comments. Um, we hope that uh, you appreciate the, uh, the work that went into this and the uh, interactions that we've had with the community and the changes that we've made to the project in response to community feedback. Um, we do appreciate the early interactions with the public, which allow us to work together with the public to come up with a project that's more, uh, that works for everybody. Um, so again, the public comment period will end on October 28th. If you think of anything else or have any additional comments, uh, please feel free to email that to us or send that to us in writing again. And we will include that in the final EIR with, of course, our response to your questions or comments. So. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for that. Really appreciate everyone joining. Again, I am Ianad Burrell, the community affairs person. So usually when residents are reaching out, they will reach out to the community affairs department and Sobrante and El Sobrante is my area. I think that is it. I will take one more look at the Q&A and I think we've covered everything and I don't see any raised hands. So let me just check one more time. I just wanna make sure we're not missing anyone. Thank you everyone again for joining. This meeting has been recorded and it will be uploaded to our the Sobrante Water Treatment Plant website webpage very soon. So thank you again. And one more time, Jay, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. can you put a, pull up that last slide one more time that has the contact and your name and email address? Sure. Just in case. Okay, great. Can do. There we go. If anyone would, needs to reach out or would like to reach out, here's the information. You can reach out by email or if you want to mail something in to Jay, you have it there. And right there at the top is a project website, ebmud.com slash SOWTP. Thank you all again. And I think that is it. Have a good evening unless there's anything else. If not, have a good evening. I thank you all. I'm going to stop the recording now and log off. Thank you.